have you ever heard of mendonbikes.com? Well, they reached out and said, hey, we have some bikes with a great deal going on. Would you like to take a look at any of them? I said yes, and I ended up with this. From Abel, that's Abel Bike Company, this is their core. Now on the Mendham website, it says RBL core. It says 29 RBL core, but I looked all over this frame and I can only see core, so that's what I'm gonna go buy. There's some nice stuff here and we're gonna go over each and every detail, but the one thing is all these features I'm about to go over. On their website, this bike is currently $264.99. Let's find out what that gets you starting up top. With these bars, 31.8 millimeter diameter, sweep six degrees. My width measurements say 720 millimeters wide. This stem, that's a 50 millimeter stem. And whenever I'm dealing with budget bikes, I mean, you get down this low, and some of the features that are on this, I always think there's gotta be shortcuts. Well, I like it when I see actual torque specifications on a stem. That tells me it's not bargain basement stuff, we're starting out pretty good. Grips are lock-ons. These are double lock-ons and they have kind of that barrel profile. Don't know if you can see that on camera, but they fatten up here in the middle. Makes for a comfy grip while you're riding down the trail and cushiony. And that's a rubbery stipple texture to go with the padding. Now, if you're a brand person, there is none on the grips. Trigger shifter, thumb and trigger lever. The view window lets us know it's gonna be an eight speed drivetrain and this shifter, a micro shift acolyte also a tip off to what's hiding back there. And it's gonna be a one by because there's nothing over there. Good so far. Now we move down to the head tube and this is not tapered. This is a straight steer head tube. So factor that in. It does have nice branding. I like that Able logo there. Now a straight steer isn't a deal killer because you can adapt these. I'm not a fan of adapters. I prefer a taper, but I do give compromises when prices get super, super affordable. That's gonna mean this is a straight steer fork, which even on tapers, we usually get in our budget bikes. And this fork, this is an SR Suntour, an XCM30, the 30 for the 30 millimeter stanchions. And there's a hundred millimeters of travel baked in there, but if you do wanna lock it out, it has manual lockout on this fork. Also a preload adjuster. Getting down here, first we can see, see that lever on the other side. This is a quick release, and these are gonna be 29 inch wheels, very popular with mountain bikes. These are Kendas. Now the specs on the website say these are 29 by 2.35, but when I look at them, I see 29 by 2.20. So I'm gonna say 29 by 2.20 is what to expect. These are double wall alloy rims, and these aren't just any hub. Now they're not super fancy, but they are a brand. Let's see if I can get on the other side here. These are Joytex. You know, I like it when it's not just the basic of the basic, especially at this price. To get a Joytex, I've ridden Joytex before. They do okay. Even the quick release skewer Joytex, and by the way, this is quick release front and rear. Even the skewers Joytex branded, and by the way, that's Joytex front and rear and Joytech quick release skewers front and rear. So good hubs both sides. Now this rear spacing, I'm gonna have to get geometry specs for this bike and I'll put that in another video. But my eyes see 135 back here. If it's anything different, I'll let you know. But that's what I suspect this is, completely usable. But with this wheel set, you really don't need to change anything, especially considering what we've got going on back here. Let's go ahead and get to this drivetrain. Kicks off with polymer pedals, the usual. If you ever get confused, you got the labels out of the box, everything you need out of the box to ride this bike, except the tools to assemble it with. These crank arms, alloy and long, 175 millimeters. Due to my prop, I can't get this horizontal like I'd like to have it, but this is a square taper crank set, but I want you to look at that crank design. Kind of looks like an XT, but it's not. It's a square taper. It just has that look. This chain ring, that's a 32 tooth. Not bad, and following our way to the back, it gets better. We already knew it was an eight speed and we knew it was an acolyte, but we didn't know it is a clutched acolyte. Yeah, you can get a clutched drivetrain now for 265 bucks. That's crazy good. And this eight speed, that is a cassette, a 12 to 42 tooth cassette. There's a shot of the Joytech rear hub. How about this? We're getting this drivetrain. I knew the time would come. I just didn't know it would happen this fast. We would start seeing drivetrains like this at $265. 
That's just crazy good. I even like these 80s lines on their owner's manual. I'm always a sucker for 80s stuff. And this is just kind of a generic owner's manual. Nothing super fancy, no detailed torque specs or anything like that. But there are those 80s lines. Now let's talk about this frame. This bike comes in sized frames, a small, medium, and a large, all available at the time I'm making this video. This frame is a medium, and I sized it at home. It was 16 inches. And according to this sticker, it is involved in 50 million forest, which is new to me, but I'm gonna look it up as soon as I get back home. Here's the frame sticker, and yeah, I don't know where they get the RBL core, because this clearly says 29 Able Core M. The M is for the medium. Let's look closer at this frame. Of course, that straight steer, but this is considered the black. So if you're shopping, there are two colors, a slate, which is kind of a blue color, and then what they call black, but you can see the black is actually two colors. One of them, the base color, is a glossy metallic, almost a taupe color. It reminds me of the Kent Truvel, and there might be some reasons we'll talk about in just a bit for that. But then that goes into the black. I like this, the way this points and tapers in and then goes to flat black. Well, then there's some more, that taupe accent. This is a nice looking frame. It's got that curve in the seat post. For some reason, I've always been a sucker for that. It enables larger tires is one reason. So maybe I've got some subconscious going in there telling me that. And then the Able branding, that glossy taupe, then the black, it's, it's a good look. Sized frames. This one, medium 16 inch. Frame complements the seat post clamp. That clamps onto a seat post with index markings. The seat post 30.9 diameter, 350 length. The saddle sitting on top of that, fancy, a Cell Royal saddle. Let's talk about the brakes. These brake levers are polymer and these are mechanical disc brakes. Actually, they're polymer, the base is polymer. The actual lever itself feels like an alloy. Yeah, definitely alloy there. The mechanical disc brakes brand JAK Super Brakes. Now, I have a hit or miss relationship with JAKs. They used to be horrible. They've been improving recently. Now they have a hydraulic brake. Makes me wonder why they didn't drop the name Super Brake and make these just JAK brakes, make the hydraulic their Super Brakes. But I don't know. I'm not in their marketing department. I do know. These are 160 millimeter rotors. Rear rotor also 160 and also JAK Super Brake back here. And there's that Joytech quick release at the rear. Remember when we never got that? Now we're getting it on a bike that's $265. That's decently specced with some other stuff from this Able Bike Company. And there is plenty of room both at the top of this rear triangle and down at the bottom down there. And look at those chainstay designs. They kind of sweep out there. Let's take it to Magnolia and see how it does. I'll spoil the surprise somewhat by telling you that within the first few turns, I had already figured out that this is the best sub $270 bike I've ever removed from a box and hit the trail with. I don't have the geometry specs yet, I'll get those to you, but with my positioning on this medium frame, my five foot 10 height, this has a nice cross country feel to it. Quite comfortable, but also edging towards being aggressive enough to dig in and push it on a ride. Also, and this is really big, when we're talking about bikes priced this low, lightweight, I meant to roll over this, and it caught some air and came down nice and smooth. This bike only weighs 31 pounds. That's the weight you would expect on an entry level local bike shop hardtail, which as I understand it, is what these Able bikes were built to be. At 31 pounds, it's light enough to maneuver around, which is a big benefit. Bikes anywhere near this price usually weigh close to 40. Lightweight, agile, perfect for entry level trail riding, but it's one thing to have a bike capable of going over some small bumps. It's another to have one that can actually survive some trail riding meaning a bike that can take a tumble. A knock the lens out of my glasses caliber tumble. Over the bars, always a learning experience. First, I thought I'd knocked my vision wonky until I realized my glasses were broken. My second thought, is the bike still okay? I think nothing is gonna speak better than my post-crash comments immediately after I got the bike up and checked it. It can take a lick and keep on ticking. Let me explain what happened here, because this actually builds value for the bike, because normally ordering a bike online means you have to assemble it, a very important thing to get right. I was in a hurry. I knew the brakes weren't adjusted properly. I thought I could compensate. I was overconfident in my abilities. I tested these brakes before I hit the trail. I knew they were bad, especially the rear brake. 
It was so bad out of adjustment, I could squeeze it all the way to the bars. It wouldn't stop the buck. And if you didn't know any better, you bought a bike online, you got it assembled and just hit the trail, well, you could end up in the same situation. But what if I said this sub $270 bike, even less, with the Kev Central coupon code that makes it even cheaper, what if that also got you professional bike setup? Stick with me, I'll explain more, but it's a good thing I crashed where I did because had I been going a little further, I would have been going faster and hit that and things would have been worse. Obviously, I would have preferred to have not crashed and I could feel my lips swelling by the second, but there is an upside to this. I was able to give documented proof that this Able Core can take a crash and literally the only effect with some slight dirt on the bike, and the plastic dork disc was slightly dislodged, but I popped it right back into place. So as I head back for some much needed ice, I'm riding a little slower, but probably more like a new rider, but I didn't let that stop me. I came back the very next day, wiser, the brakes more dialed in, and showing off some uphill footage. The boring part of trail riding, but the true part that steers away a lot of people because they buy an entry level bike that doesn't have good gearing. Under $300 on a bike is usually torture uphill. This one nice and easy. You have to climb uphill before you can have fun downhill, and that's where the clutched derailleur comes in handy. And where you get to show that the brakes do work when properly adjusted. That feature I went over yesterday and caught a little air on. Well, it's blocked off today. I also used the newly adjusted brakes to slow down at the fateful spot. It's probably going to be a while before I'm ripping through this with any gusto. But I'm on the trail and I'm riding on a very affordable bike. And I think this gives you an idea that this is a true entry-level trail-capable bike from a brand that builds bike shop quality with components capable of being on mountain bike trails at prices I would expect from a big box store. Actually, I would expect this to cost at least $200 more at a big box store. Who is this going to appeal to? Well, obviously new riders, people that need a second bike, maybe a loaner for your friends to ride with you at the trails. And it's not just for trails, this tire tread's gonna work good on the streets too, so it could be the coolest street cruiser you're probably gonna be able to buy for under 265 bucks, even less with the coupon code. I'm going to say this is the most I've been impressed with an affordable bike this year. And when a company is selling something that performs well above the price that it's selling at, it's worth the excitement it generates. And I'm going to suspect that if you're interested in this bike, you probably want to take a look while it's there. Official geometry specs are coming, but my ride field geometry analyzer tells me that this medium frame is a perfect size for me. It's a 16 inch frame and at $265, this is a usable fork. It's the same fork that I see on $600 bike shop bikes. There's so much good here. Even these OEM tires, they're good enough for both trail and street. And this drivetrain at this price, they could have named this the Trailblazer because this is the best I've seen at these prices thus far. That's clutched. And it's paired to a cassette that has a decent range. And also, you don't even have to swap wheel sets because it's all equipped as needed out of the box. And it's the small things, the better hubs. You could hear the engagement on this as I was riding. And that's quick release front and rear on a bike under $270. The finish is even top tier. I've seen some beautiful bikes, but the lower the price, usually the more fragile the finish. This one is tough. I literally crashed it and there's not a scratch. Double impressive when it's a two-tone with a matte black over a glossy. More often than not, that's super fragile, but this one, beauty and durability, you can clearly see the bike shop level finish here. Clean cabling too, and everything that I've shown you, well, it just gets better. Because we go to the website where all this is available, mendombikes.com, which is owned and backed by Kent Bucks. We know that brand well, the makers of the Truvail, the Giordano bikes, which are also available on this site, and you can use the discount code for those. And look at this, just like I said, $264.99. Free shipping as well. Here are the sized frame options, small, medium, and large. And then the specs, you can see down here, 31 pounds, just like I showed you and I talked about on the trail ride, very noticeable on the trail, and of course, all the specs. Every component that we talked about listed here, and a guarantee. This isn't some fly-by-night website, and there are a lot of those when it comes to affordable bikes online. This is not one of them, this one backed by Kent Bikes, so it's legitimate. And if all this and that good pricing isn't good enough, well listen up, because it's about to get crazy better. I crashed because I hit the trail with the bike that was out of adjustment, and it's been said many times, including by me, that part of buying a bike at a bike shop is you're paying a premium to get professional setup. Well, how about the best of both? 
saving money and getting bike shops set up, I noticed under the help section they have an assembly rebate. They will pay up to $75 towards having the bike professionally assembled at a bike shop, and I checked around. Unboxed assembly prices range from $90 to $115 in my area, so in effect you could have this bike for under $300 post rebate and have it professionally set up. But then I started thinking, what if we got the bike out of the box and got the front wheel on it and then took it to the bike shop? Well, those prices are $70 to $80, so essentially free professional bike shop set up, courtesy of Mendham Bikes. So now you can see why I'm so hyped on this. The bike specs, the bike's price, the performance you're getting per price. I mean, if I were shopping for an entry-level trail bike, this would definitely have my eye. Throw some aggressive knobbier tires on this and ride it like it's stolen, which is almost literally the case. Also, want to note here, I'm not sponsored and I didn't receive this bike for free. It will be donated to a local nonprofit after this review, as is customary here unbiased, honest opinions. I'll even nitpick a couple of things just to show the fair and unbiased observations here. And I do give a lot of leeway when something's this affordable, but the lack of a tapered head tube, that's gonna limit fork options if you decide you wanna upgrade, but I don't think it really matters. Ride this like it is. Also, there is no dropper support. I've been spoiled with droppers recently, but this isn't the bike for one. That curved seat tube, it doesn't support one well with this long seat post. There's just not room. The seat post, as a matter of fact, can only go down so far, and it's not as far as usual. Normally, you can slam them all the way down. Well, this is it. It's a good thing there are sized frames, but when you're shopping for the sized frames, you might want to size it down a size from what you normally ride if you're a person that slams your saddle all the way down. Because as you can see, there's just not room to go very far in with the seat post. And this is getting really trivial. This is a Cell Royal saddle, so that's good. But those little plastic things... They grab shorts, but they look sporty. Other than that, you know, pretty much like everything. There's so much good here and this price. It's just, there's not a lot to complain about. And with all this good, I was even more surprised when I said, hey, can I get a discount code for viewers? And they said, yes. So discount code Kev Central gets you at least 5% off of any bike on the Mendo Bikes website and even this bike this Able Core, and I have two or three more of their bikes I'll be showing you in the coming weeks. Comment below, thanks for watching, and have a great day.